Hello, sisters. I am back again to continue our conversation about Africana womanism. And in my last video, I spoke to the first three of the 18 characteristics, which were self-namer, self-definer, and family-centered. And today I will be sharing about genuine in sisterhood. So that's the fourth characteristic of Africana womanism uh, that I will be sharing about today. So um, in all things, I seek to dialogue with our culture for understanding. And uh, in a recent post that I made about sisterhood, um, I drew from a Nigerian scholar by the name of Oye Ronke, Oye Wumi. And I apologize if I'm mispronouncing her name. But she said that any notion of sisterhood among pre colonial African women is subsumed under the broader ideal set of values that bound women to women as well as women to men in what has been called a dual sex cultural system. Within this ideal set are the following. One, the primacy of kinship and communalism. Two, reverence for ancestors and elders. Three, respect for and practice of spirituality. Four, the centrality of motherhood. And five, shared power between men and women and of gendered institutional practice where it is beneficial to the self-determination and agency of family and community. So um, I started with that as my base because again, I'm looking to African culture uh, to understand the dynamic of sisterhood and how we can embrace it to our African advantage. And so um, I'm considering these five things that she listed as um, the expectations or the standards for how we practice sisterhood. And so uh, I'm going to go through each one and share my thoughts. Um, so for number one, the primacy of kinship and communalism. I interpreted that as making our relationships with our family and our community of people our priority. How can we encourage that in one another as sisters? And I think that starts with having conversations around cultural scriptures, because that is our guide to understanding how our relationships should function. Now, for me, the more that I committed to reading and dialoguing with culture, it literally caused me to start making changes in my relationships where I was seeing that my actions were not aligning with culture. My thoughts were not aligning with culture. And this is why it's so necessary to have these clear expectations because we can then identify when we're off track. And together in sisterhood, we can help each other reset. Sisterhood is a good place to do this because we can confide in one another, find understanding and compassion, and also accountability. 
And we can often find strength in our sisters to grow through our challenges. So I would encourage us to make a commitment to honesty and culture with our sisters. Because that kind of sisterhood not only heals and protects us, it also heals and protects our family and our greater community, our global African community. So that's my thoughts on the first expectation of sisterhood. Um, number two, our, I'm sorry, um, Oye Wumi says that there is reverence for ancestors and elders. Okay, so we know that our cultural heritage places great honor and respect for our ancestors. And ancestors are those elders who have passed away, but still live on in spirit. And they live through us in the lessons they've taught us and in the guidance they provide us from the spirit realm. And our elders are the older among us who are wise in culture and have committed their life in service to maintaining the knowledge of our cultural traditions. They have been a living example of culture and they teach us so that our legacy of greatness may continue. So how can we in sisterhood show reverence for our ancestors and elders? One, we can make a point to involve elder sisters in our sister circles. And this was something that I learned from uh, Mama Inna Yabaruti in her lecture about African womanhood and sisterhood specifically. She said that it is important to have sisters of different ages in your sister circle because in this case, the older sisters have the experience of life. They have um, the wisdom that has come from those lived experiences and they are able to help you along your life journey. Um, secondly, how we can make a point to show reverence for our ancestors and elders is by working together to teach our children to show respect for the elders in our community, to help our children understand the value of elders. And for that, I'm going to the Msingi, the book of Umoja chapter three, verses one through 13. And I am going to read all of it. It's long, but every bit of it is so poignant. So, it reads, the family must be, as in African culture, the focal point of unity, not simply of siblings and of genders, but also of generations. One of the most important expressions of family unity is the respect and collective concern and care for the elders. Respect for elders is a cardinal article of the code of behavior. One who does not respect his or her elders is seen as immoral and uncultured. Elders are respected like the ancestors they will become for their long life of service to the community, for their achievement, for providing an ethical model and for the richness of their experience and the wisdom this has produced. Thus, elders are seen as judges and reconcilers. It is they who hear cases of conflict and problems and offer solutions. One of the most important aspects of African respect for elders is that it makes them useful and active in the community. 
the active participation and involvement of elders in the daily life of the family not only benefits them, but the younger people. For it teaches them to understand and appreciate the process of growing old, gives them access to seasoned knowledge and experience, and helps prevent the generation gap. This linking of young and old is the concept of lineage which links all the living, the departed, and the yet unborn. In life, continental African children are taught to memorize and recite their family tree as far back as any ancestor is known. This keeps historical memory alive and reaffirms respect for those living and departed who contributed to their coming into being and cultural molding. So this high regard of elders is echoed throughout our culture. As I also found an article by Francois Le Codonu entitled Honoring Our Elders on Africa Day. This was an article that he posted on LinkedIn. Uh, he shares that elders provide an extraordinary contribution to our society. They are protectors of the greater good and the connective tissue between generations. They influence younger generations through lessons and cultural traditions that bind communities together for life through any hardship. That no matter where you go in the world or what challenges you face, you can always go back home to your family sit with an elder and receive timeless wisdom and advice. And he goes on to reference one of his favorite characterizations of elders in African culture, which comes from Burkinabe author, Sobonufu Some. She said, there is a difference between being in a position of power and being in a position of responsibility. Elders in traditional communities do not take power. They take responsibility and empower others. Whew, that's deep. Um, in sisterhood, is bring it back to, to how we can um, impart these things within our sisterhood. I think that we should strive to become elders. That means not just growing old in age, but growing wise in culture and contributing to the cultural molding of the young, our future generations. Um, in sisterhood, let us leave a legacy as keepers of the tradition. Another way that we can show reverence for our ancestors and elders through sisterhood is something that I've started. I'm still learning about it, but it is creating an ancestral shrine. And that leads me into the next goal, which um, is respect for and practice of spirituality. So, Ancestral veneration is a spiritual practice of our African culture. It's a means by which we show love and respect to our deceased family. 